Good grief. Why do they never go in for me? Hey, music lovers! Yes, here we go again. Um, remarkably, back with another video. Barely two or three days after the last one. What's going on? I seem to have pulled my finger out somewhat. Don't know where it was stuck, but it's out now. Anyway, so here we go. 12 by 12. So, over the summer, I met up for a drink with uh, John Downing who's better known as Six Inch Pianist on here. And um, out of the conversation, it came, we started talking about 12 inches. And John said how much he enjoyed people showing 12 inches. Um, and, he, he, and he said he actually really enjoyed my long neglected series of videos I did where uh, I pulled 12, random 12 inches out of my collection and um, talked about them. Well, for all those people who are going, oh no, well you've got John to blame for this one, so here we go. So, 12, round and 12 inches from my collection. I'll talk a little bit about each one. Um, try not to take too long. So, up first, absolute brilliant piece of music, both sides of this, um, from one of the 80s greatest bands, I think. One of the, one of the best vocalists of the 80s, definitely. Uh, Japan, David Sylvian, of course, uh, with Visions of China. Truly outstanding stuff. This came from, now, this was released in 81. I've forgotten which album it's actually from, which is a bit remiss. Quite a nice, just simple label. Basically everything they did after uh, Quiet Life was just sublime. I mean, I like the um, early, too early, glam, more glam rocky albums too. Adol what is it? Adolescent, whatever it's called in the Obscure Alternatives. I think that's right. Uh, but this stuff from 81 to 82, whenever, I think that's how long they recorded, 83 maybe they split. Absolutely amazing stuff. and. For me, his brother, Steve Janssen, David Silverman's brother, Steve Janssen, who's a drummer, I just think he's one of the great drummers of the 80s. Absolutely incredible stuff. And some of the stuff he went on to play in the various projects that involve various members of Japan later in the decade and into the 90s is just phenomenal. Um, fantastic stuff. B-side is Swing, which is just more of the same goodness. Right, more 80s up next. Uh, fairly different from the more introspective Japan, we've got Stadium Bluster from Simple Minds. This is from the album Once Upon a Time. Single was All the Things She Said. I think this was a top 10 hit in the UK. Definitely in the charts. Uh, so you've got an extended version of all the things she said, which is actually quite a good mix of it. Um, and then you've got Promise to a Miracle with a US remix, which actually does sound different. And I'll talk about remixes as I go further into this. And then you've got a really, yeah, it's an okay version of Don't You Forget About Me Live, which has basically got at least, seems like two, three minutes, maybe not quite as long, but two or three minutes of uh, the crowd singing the refrain. Um, Top stuff really, quite a nice back cover, what's the label, fairly boring, boring label, oh no, 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 that's quite a pretty label, that one, that side isn't so good, but that one's quite a pretty label, uh, from the back cover, yeah, I actually quite like Once Upon a Time, it wasn't a patch on uh, the one that Waterfront came off, uh, and Speed You Love To Me, which has completely slipped my mind now. Um, but I still like Simple Minds and it's only when they released Belfast Child that really they went too far for me. Right, speeding on into the 90s. This I picked up as a blind buy for a pound from a charity shop. This is, aptly enough, a, a band named Blind. I know absolutely nothing about them. There's very little information on the uh, internet. Music is kind of 
shoegazy post rock I suppose is probably the best way of describing it it's 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 not bad it's not I think the biggest problem I have is with the female vocalist on this it doesn't quite fit the music is a bit too maybe a bit too mannered for me but that nah, was a nice pickup right one of my absolute favorite 12 inches i think this is a sublime piece of music from start to finish um i play this again and again and again all the time and this is prince and the revolution mountains the extended version which is nearly 10 minutes long um, there is not a note wrong in the wrong place on this it it sounds like the single the album edit from a parade is cut down from this 10 minute jam version and it is it, funky it, it just goes all over the place the closest thing i can say for this and it really reminds me of it is fool's gold by stone roses it's it's got different sections to it it follows a groove all the way through this is just a magical magical piece of music uh b-side is alexa de Parry. Uh, which is, they, I think it, it sounds like a jam to me. Uh, there aren't any, um, I don't remember there being any vocals on it. Um, thank you, Park Babel. Don't remember there being any vocals, but it is a decent enough jam, but it's just not a patch on the, on the absolute monster A side of this. Fantastic stuff. And then, who would come up? in the same batch, but Wendy and Lisa, erstwhile members of the revolution. I like Wendy and Lisa. I thought they produced some really good stuff. Such a shame they never really broke big because I think they were fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. So this is, this is a really good, good 12 inch. Uh, you've got, if I get the label out so I can see what we've got. Basically, I think it, yeah, it's three versions of Satisfaction which is a cracking tune in its own right. You've got full dub mix, which is a proper mix. It sounds good, different to the album version. Then you've got a minute or so of a 12 inch dance mix. No, it's wrong, that's wrong. Then you've got a 12 inch dance mix, which is, sounds different again. And then you've got a minute dance dub, which I think they just wanted to up time. I'm not sure why they put that on. But the two main versions of this, Cracking late 80s pop. Hey, I used cracking first time for ages. Um, somebody asked me about that the other day on a comment. I think I answered them. Hope I did. Um, yeah, where I got my channel name from. Terrific stuff. Absolutely brilliant. Released in 88, I think. Was it 88? 89. Love Wendy and Lisa. Right, one of the things I love about the Parade Era prints is the really boxy sort of tin biscuit style drumming. The drum sound he's got on there. I don't know what... For me, it's just an addict. I could listen to that drum beat by itself over and over again. And one of my other favourite 12 inches I've got seem to use that kind of sound. It sounds like somebody's playing a biscuit box. You know, a tin tin box. And this one is with a fairly memorable cover. I actually have this on a t-shirt somewhere. Uh, this is Therapy, Northern Irish band, Teeth Grinder. This would go straight, along with Mountains, this would be straight into my top 100 songs of, top 100 favourite songs. Um, Teeth Grinder is an amazing riff to it. It's, it, niggles at your head um, it's like a drill that just doesn't let up in your ears it's it's incredible um, the other track Summer of Hate with its memorable uh, refrain of F Woodstock uh, and you've got Human Mechanism and Sky High Mackay terrific 12 inch 
Um, I only bought this 12 inch because um, somebody nicked my original CD version of this. Um, when, right after I bought my first CD player, I had about six or seven CDs. Somebody broke into my flat and uh, nicked all my CDs, so left a CD player. Um, but I bought this, which I'm so glad I did, to replace the CD copy, so there we go. Good things sometimes do come from bad. Another classic 90s band, more 90s. Um, absolute classic single. And I love the cover of this, it's absolutely beautiful. So we've got Manic Street Preachers, Stay Beautiful. This was their first major label release on Columbia um, after they'd left Heavenly. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Um, possibly the first Manic song I really heard. Maybe I did hear Motown Jump when it came out, but I'm not 100% on that. Um, but I heard this and I thought, wow. And the lyrics are dense, really, really dense, beautiful label there. Love that label. Um, and then you've got B-Sides, R.P. McMurphy, which is based around the book, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. The band were always careful to say it was the book, not the movie that inspired that song. And uh, what was the other? What's the other? Stay Beautiful. Uh, Soul Contamination, which is uh, an acoustic bass number. Sounds a bit demo-ish. Sounds a bit like a demo, but it's still a top song. Love that. Such a good record. Right, the next one. I don't have a picture sleeve to pour, which I know exists, so I'm quite sad that I don't have a picture sleeve. But it's on Island, and it is, we've gone thrashy now. So we've got Anthrax and Madhouse. Excellent song. Um, excellent stuff, really top-notch thrash. Um, it's on spreading the disease, is that right? I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, B-sides are really good. We've got a couple of songs, I think they were both recorded live. Uh, I think they were recorded in Manchester from when I listened to it. Uh, the other day, so there's the songs, we've got AIR, and then their version of God Save the Queen, which is a cracking run through of that. Shame I don't have a picture disc of that, I'd love to get that. Right, complete, no, we'll, actually, we'll stay with the Metalies, Rockies, and then I'll finish with that. Right, so before, a lot of these have been um, absolutely brilliant 12 inch mixes of standard songs, um, particularly Mountains. All the things she said was a good mix. The, the Wendy and Lisa mixes were great. Sometimes you, you pick up a 12 inch where the mix is just absolute waste of time. So here we got, and I love the cover of this. This is such a great cover. So this is Calling to You by Robert Plant from the Fate of Nations album which I loved. I saw Robert Plant that year at Glastonbury and it, what a show that was. Absolutely blew everybody else off the stage that night, including Black Crows and all kinds of people. Um, Fontana label. Now this is a maxi single. Despite it saying 45 on the, on the record, it actually plays at 33. Um, and there are six mixes according to you. You've got the album version, and then you've got, here we go, the Sum to Kalsoon mix, the Shukran Sa'abi mix, Always My Heart mix, Artist Valley mix, Perla Enta mix. And they all sound the same to me. There's very, 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 very little difference. I mean, the album version is far superior to any of these mixes. Um, I mean, I know, I know I've, I, I would have picked this up for cheap, like, you know, I don't know, for a couple of quid or something. And I thought, well, eh, Robert Plant, he's not going to put his name to anything duff. Unfortunately, this is a bit duff. Um, it's nice to have the LP version on vinyl, because I've only got it on CD, the actual album. But this is, unfortunately, a 
case of a bit disappointing this one. Lovely cover though. Worth it is for the cover to be honest. Right. From one rock legend to another. <laughs> bon Jovi. Right, we've got a Bon Jovi 12 inch here. I was never a massive Bon Jovi fan. Um, I think because they were overplayed in the 80s. They were so overplayed. It was like the um, rock band that just pop fans kind of liked. So all those living on a prayer. Yeah, I can appreciate them, but... Mm -hmm. I mean, this one is not overplayed. Bad Medicine is probably one of my favourite songs by them. Uh, from the New Jersey album. They're a bit cheeky on this. This was the first single released from New, Jer New Jersey. And on the B-side is Lay Your Hands On Me, which later they released as the fifth single. Really fleecing the fans there. And then you've got 99, 99 in the Shade, all um, on the album New Jersey, which I've got up there somewhere. Um, so it's just a trailer, basically, for the album. And I wouldn't have paid more than a quid for this. Probably got it at Woolworths or something. Um, but yeah, I like Bad Medicine. It's all right, put it on sometimes. Right, so John Downing was the um, inspiration behind this video for me to do it. And luckily this came up and I know that John likes a bit of this band and it's, it's kind of apt that it did come out. Thunder. I think he went to see them recently. Did he go to see them around Christmas time? Maybe, but anyway, we've got a picture disc here. Unfortunately, the bottom is split. Is there any way you can buy these? These vinyl covers? Because this one's split and it's getting worse. I don't want the record scratched. Um, it's um, Bittersweet, uh, not Bittersweet Symphony, Backstreet Symphony uh, is a cracking classic early 90s Brit rock track. It is brilliant. I mean, it's so good, it actually made the charts. Um, I played I played this, and it actually doesn't sound bad for a picture disc. It's a bit crackly, but it's pretty good, actually. It's a really nice one. Then you've got them laughing about on the back. B-sides are No Way Out of the Wilderness. What's that, an album track? And An English Man on Holiday, which is quite a quite a good song That's, that was live in I don't know where it was no maybe No Way Out of the Wilderness wasn't a, an album track although it was produced by Andy Taylor yeah Andy Taylor from Duran Duran produced Backstreet Symphony um, great song great song really good band as well put that back Right, and then a complete change of pace because I couldn't fit this in anywhere else. Number 12 is a band that me and James Griffiths talked, have been talking a bit about. Um, so this is The Art of Noise. This is the Love Beat um, 12 inch. So basically this is um, Moments in Love and you've got, I think it's, You've got two mixes of moments in love. One's the, doesn't actually say, as per usual on ZTT records, it's hard trying to find out which actual mix you've got here. That was one thing they did. They were really obtuse about which mixes they've got. Um, but you've got, it's called Moments in Love Beaten, which is got a lot of, um, it's basically Moments in Love, same usual speed, but with a lot of um, Tom Toms on it and other percussion over the top of it, which lends it quite a nice feel to it. And then you've got the standard edit, single edit, I guess, I think it's a seven inch edit. Then you've got uh, Beatbox Diversion 10, which is another track from um, Who's Afraid of the Art of Noise. And then you've got Love Beat, which is uh, Moments in Love, really slowed down. It's a, 
they've reduced the speed of it and then put extra vocals on the top and it sounds glorious it sounds absolutely glorious possibly better than the album versions because the album version goes on for over 10 minutes I think and it does maybe outstay its, its um, welcome and one of these versions might have been better in its place on the album actually flow it might flow better maybe especially the beaten version but anyway terrific 12 inch absolutely fabulous love all kinds of stuff on ZTT and of course it is a treasure horn, oh, treasure horn, treble horn production here we go up noise well there you go I've whirled through huh, it's still 20 minutes long I managed to whirl through some of the some 12 inches um, I, I quite enjoyed I, I do enjoy pulling these out cleaning them up and playing them all because um, a lot of the time it's stuff that I haven't heard for a long time so it is quite nice doing these I'll have to do these more often maybe something like once a month I've got enough I think I've got enough for like 25 30 videos of this maybe something like that anyway right well thank you all very much for sticking around to the end if you've watched up to this point um, hope you all had a lovely Christmas and a fantastic New Year um, and I'll see you all again soon. Cheers everybody. Bye.